Mishpachas Boimgarten are one of these genuine mishpachas, dug mechayas that we all look up to. And Baruch Hashem, there's a lot of brothers, so I can't talk about all the brothers, because each in their own is an hour speech. But I will focus on the one between whom, I guess either they had a goyl or a lottery, I'm not sure to, who is the one to pick which brother does the talking. I know when me, Shul, and Baruch, and Yossi get together, we have a major fight. I don't know how it's like by you. But Baruch Hashem, we have with us the Shliach of South Africa. He's on the Bezdin of South Africa. He brought Kiddush Lubavitch, Kiddush Hashem, to the other side of the world. And equally important, he brings the high expectations of the Mishpachas Baumgarten to a very high level. This is a Mishpacha that had and continues to have a lot of Mesiris Nefesh. But when my Zayde, Abzalman, was in 770 for the first time, and the Rebbe passed by him, he says, Nu, Reb Zalman, from Paris, Rabbi Mizetzer Do in 770. Had the Zayde gesagt, aber der Bilet is given zeyer, zeyer tayer. The ticket was very, very expensive. What we see in this end result, Taira Chsidim, Taira family members, this is huge. This is huge. Aber the billet is given zeyer, zeyer tayer. This is Nishgekum and Gring, and we're now going to hear a few words about those days. The Rebbe Samensch, Rabbi Yossel Baumgarten from South Africa. I just want to share with you a story about my parents. As you know that I think on three occasions, the Rebbe asked by a Fabrengen that he wants volunteers shluchen, to go out on shlichas. And on two occasions, my father put his name down, he wants to go on shlichas. And the third time, he did it again, and he, and, and, and he said in his settle to the Rebbe, I'm prepared to go anywhere the Rebbe will send me to do any kind of work. And the Rebbe gave him an answer, and he said, you are a shlichus in Crown Heights. So, at one time, they went on a pula in the University of Maryland, and on the way back after the weekend, my father decided it was uh, Motsi Shabbos, late, or Sunday night, Sunday night. So he says, let's go past 770. We just went on a ship, let's go past 770. And they walked to 770, and the Rebbe was just leaving to go home. And as the Rebbe passed by, he gave them a smile, and that was it. The next day, Rabbi Kharakov calls my father and says, I want to give you a yashir koyach. So my father said, what about? The Rebbe gave a smile. He says, what's... It was something was going on that particular week. He says, that's the first smile the Rebbe gave that week. So he wants to give me a yashir koyach. One day, Shloim Yedredach says, I'm going to 770. I have to do something. So I was in the bus. He drove there, and I was there. So he parked in front of 770, and he went out, and he left the keys in the ignition. Now, this was a old-fashioned bus that was very strange and had a lot of things on it. So when he went out, I t put on the ignition. I didn't drive the bus, I put on the ignition. And all the dials were going back and forth, and I was paying close attention. And then you know, sometimes when you're engrossed, you feel that somebody is watching you. So I, I was bending down, I pick up my head and turn around, and there the Rebbe is walking towards 770. And he's looking at me. And he passes by, and he turns around and keeps looking, and goes up the steps, and keeps looking until he goes through the door. He closes the door of 770, I go back to the dials. Uh, ten minutes later, Shalom Israel comes out to go to the drive. So I said to him, do you know who was uh, looking at me? He says, yes, 
The Rebbe told me that somebody's monkeying around on my bus. The first rebuttal is how all the Torah changed. You just turned the key. If it happened today, the Talmud of Voltaire would probably drive the bus to Gagnon's in Montreal or somewhere. That's one thing. 